All right, I wanted to give you refutation to this Catholic heresy and strawman argument regarding the pre-tribulational rapture or the rapture in general. What they believe is that basically what they say in this article is from Catholic.com and they say they use the strawman argument that all post trevors use. And they say here, until the 19th century, all Christians agreed that the rapture, though it was not called that at the time, would occur immediately before the second coming. At a close period of persecution, Okay, I want to point out, because what they're saying here is that the tribulation, or properly called the time of Jacob's trouble, they're claiming it's a period of persecution. Uh, no, it's not. It's actually God pouring out his wrath on this earth. Read the uh, read Revelation. I mean, it's Jesus Christ is opening the seals. So it's not a period of persecution. It's God's wrath on this earth. So already off to a bad start. This position is, is today called the post-tribulational view because it says the rapture would come after the tribulation. And it's, it's heretical. But here's what they say here. Here's the strawman argument they always use. Sorry about that. But in the 1800s, some began to claim the rapture would, would occur before the period of persecution. This position, now, now known as the pre-tribulational view, was embraced by John Nelson Darby, an early father of, of a fundamentalist movement that became known as dispensationalism. This is a strawman argument. Here's what the Catholics always do. They, because they can't handle what the Bible says, so they have to say, well, what was, what was the historical position of, of Christians? And when they say Christians, they mean Roman Catholics. They don't mean true Bible believers. But what they're saying here is that there's no belief of the rapture before 18, 1800s with John Nelson Darby. This is the thing with post trevors It's always John Nelson Darby, John Nelson Darby, 1830, 1830, John Nelson Darby. Okay, here's the thing for you. If you're a Christian, what does the Bible say? Okay. Me as a Christian, I I could care less what who came up with what or, or what or what who believed what or how long it's been believed. If the Bible says it, I believe it. So even and, and there's proof of the rapture, belief in the rapture before 1830. But here's the thing: even if it was only invented in 1830, if the Bible clearly says it, you go by it. And this is a straw man argument from Catholics. They all, whenever they can't handle scripture, they always have to say, "Well, Christians have always believed this," you know that kind of stuff. They always have to just resort to the astronomy arguments. But I have I've done videos refuting the post tribulational heretical this heretical thing of the post tribulational rapture. It's Roman Catholic. I mean the Catholics believe they have to go through this this tribulational period. But I'm gonna show you some scripture, uh some really good uh, a really good proof text that debunks this whole I mean there's so much scripture I can go through, but here's some really good uh here's Acts chapter nine, a really good one that disproves this whole system. Acts chapter nine. And yet Saul, breathing all threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to, unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of, his, of this way, whether they be men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And look what Jesus says. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, this is Jesus speaking, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Hmm. So wait a second. When Saul was persecuting the Christians, he was persecuting Jesus Christ as well. Because you see it right there. He says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So when the when the body of Christ is being persecuted, it's affecting Jesus too, because we're part of his body. We're part of the body of Christ. So knowing that if you read again, read Revelation as Jesus Christ pouring out the wrath on the earth. So according to their logic, Basically, if we go through the tribulation period, then Jesus is basically pouring out wrath on himself, basically, because we're part of his body. It's nutty nonsense. And in verse 5, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. Or the pricks, sorry. So, that's a good proof text. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5, it just destroys the whole the post-tribulational rapture. Almost like pre-trib, post-tribulational rapture. Because... Basically, in their logic, it gets what they think we're going to go through this tribulation period, but it's Jesus Christ opening the seals on the earth, but it's going to affect us. So, basically, Jesus Christ is opening the seals on himself, because that's, that's what it comes down to. Stupid, nutty nonsense. So, that's, that's, and there's more proof, by the way, too, but this is just a good proof. It, it just destroys, the, I mean, this alone destroys the whole pre-tribulational rapture system. But this other proof as well, I mean, just compare scripture to scripture. They always say, what, what's the one verse that proves a pre-tribulational rapture? Well, I can't give you one verse, but here's one proof text about it. Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Again, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? When, you're being, when the body of Christ is being persecuted, Jesus Christ is being persecuted. So you mean to tell me that Jesus Christ is pouring out the seals on himself? Ridiculous. So don't, don't be deceived by this Catholic heresy at the post-tribulational rapture. It's, it's wicked.
And it's basically getting people looking, not looking forward to Jesus, but looking forward to the Antichrist. So don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.